Reverend Sharpton, I want to thank you for all you do for so many. There are so many families here who have been personally touched by your leadership and your strength and your fellowship. Uh, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Turner, thank you for welcoming us. Keisha Lance Bottom, Mitch Landrew. Um, we are here on behalf of the people of our country and our president, Joe Biden. Um, and we are here to celebrate the life of Tyree Nichols. Mrs. Wells, Mr. Wells, you have been extraordinary in terms of your strength, your courage, and your grace. And we mourn with you, and the people of our country mourn with you. And I just have, just, just I'm going to be very brief. Mothers around the world, when their babies are born, pray to God when they hold that child that that body and that life will be safe for the rest of his life. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, le segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. And we have to recognize that Everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the LIFT Act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit, which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African Americans that you would explore. But n no, if you look at the, it, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners, because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country, right? Today, I'm directing federal agencies to combat resurgence of xenophobia, particularly against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders that we've seen skyrocket during this pandemic. This is unacceptable and it's un-American. I've asked the Department of Justice to strengthen its partnership with the Asian American and Pacific Islander community to prevent those hate crimes. I've also asked the Department of Health and Human Services to put out best practices for combating xenophobia in our national response to COVID. Look, in the weeks ahead, I'll be uh, reaffirming the federal government's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion and accessibility, building on the work we started in the Obama-Biden administration. That's why I'm rescinding the previous administration's harmful ban on diversity and sensitivity training 
and abolish the offensive counterfactual 1776 Commission. Unity and healing must begin with understanding and truth, not ignorance and lies. The last executive order. is condemning and combating racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. I think the country's ready, and I know this administration's ready. Thank you. Mr. President, what you talk to Biden and about? You. I got to be honest, I didn't know what to uh, call this episode. I didn't know if I wanted to call it Surviving Keisha or some Dealing with Hypocrisy or, yeah, you know, Surviving Hypocrisy or, yeah, maybe I'll just call it Surviving Gaslighting and shit, you know. Maybe we'll go with that because, you know, Kamala Harris, you know, at the start of her presidential bid, which ultimately fell before she was, she received a nod to become, uh, you know, Biden's running mate. Like, she fucked up in an interview at the Grio, and she told black America that, you know, she wasn't going to do shit specifically for them. Anything that she was going to do was going to be for all people, not not just black people or shit, okay? And that was probably the wrong message to send, but, you no, know, some people look at it a different way and shit. They're just lost in the system and everything, so they like to diminish us and shit, but, like, she had to drop out of the race. She was effectively shelved by her constituency and shit. And she she had a lot of negative... I don't want to get into it. Okay? All right. As far as I'm concerned, she's a disgrace to politics as far as women go. Okay? And you know why, shit. You know, I ain't going to drop Willie Brown's name or Montel... What is that motherfucker? Montel Williams and shit. You know, the former talk host where, you know, she was riding his arm and you know, did a lot of dubious shit. You know, she has, she, you know, unlike a certain content creator, she has that nasty ass laugh, you know, that nasty laugh and shit. I have to call her a dusty beta female, you know, just to be quite honest. I'll spare no expense and shit. Now, I have many fights w with females in my family who consider her a black woman and shit, even though she don't consider herself a black woman. She was black when she's running. She's black when she needs something from us. And then other times she's Asian. She's South Asian and shit, okay? All right, she's Indian, all right? But when she needs something for our community, she puts on her black disguise, okay? She puts on her weave, all right? Sometimes I wonder if that's her real hair, okay? But she's been looking kind of haggard lately. So, obviously, I have something to say, and I'm upset about her attending the funeral of the young man that was murdered by five cops in Memphis. And speaking on, I'm like, okay, if bitch, if you're going to go, just sit there and shut up, you know? Everybody knows this about, you know, political currency. And, you know, our community is so fucking weak these days. Nobody had the balls. You know, nobody in that guy's family, Tyre Nichols, family had the balls to tell her, 
hey, don't don't come over here and use our our son's death, you know, this young king's death as as a you know to you know a political badminton and shit. Okay, don't use him to to push your fucking agenda. This is he was murdered. He was a human being. He was a person. He was alive. And you ain't gonna do shit for black people. You're gonna do it for all peoples and shit. Okay? You're gonna do it for all fucking peoples. Not black people. No. Yeah, she had no shame and shit. And you know, it's kinda telling that Joe Biden gave her he gave her this job to bring black male voters back to the you know, back into the fold and shit, as, as they say. You know, because the math ain't mathing. You know, get get in line. You know, you have to get in line and shit, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, total line and shit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, whatever Tiffany Cross unemployed ass said. And fuck her, too. All right? Yeah, Joe Biden has given Kamala Harris the job to get black men back into the polls and shit. You know, and, and since I, you know, since they've been running the, la the latest two electoral seasons, uh, the electoral, you know, windows were open and shit, what have they done? How have they uh, tried to bring black men into the goddamn, you know, back into the fold and shit? Yeah, uh, get your booty to the poll and no fucking no voting and shit. Yeah, get your booty to the poll, no fucking no voting and shit. That, that's what they think of us, you know, men. You know, black men. Like straight black men. Not gay black men. And I'm offended by the commercials. They had Saucy Santana up there and he's talking about you want to get this booty, you got to do your public duty. I'm like, man, you don't, bruh, <laughs> go sit down somewhere and shit, you know, get, get me on a hate crime, That's, which would be ironic, since I am, I am definitely a black man, and I got one more year of relevancy and shit, according to the rest of the world. You know, I can suck my balls. I said it, you know, I'm missing old, this is a male space, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I think she should be ashamed of herself, okay? I think there should be some karma for her speaking at this man's funeral after, you know, and we know who she is, okay? She knows we know who she is, but she can't skirt her duty and shit. Biden gave her a job to bring black male voters, you know, to be, bring black male voters back into the fold and shit. Get us to vote for, for these assholes that ain't gonna do shit for us and they won't even say our names and shit. As a collective, I'm sorry, black women and shit. You're in the same group as black men. I know you guys think you're a separate race, but they're not going to say black people. They're going to say people of color. That's total bullshit. People of fucking color. The minute we hear people of fucking color, we check out. And, and you know, Kamala Harris had like some event where she went to meet, she wanted to meet, talk to black men, okay? I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, man, shit. You know, the whole Pornhub thing comes into my mind. I'm like, man, this job must be really tired. No, I'm uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, yeah, she had this uh, a meet and greet with some you know, black guys, you know, cherry pick. Obviously, they were all pussies. They were all beta males and shit. Nobody just said, hey, you know, please do not say people of color in our fucking presence, okay? Do not say people of color or any of that other shit, okay? Do not say alphabet community politics. Do not say black women's rights or nothing. Don't say that shit to us, okay? You, are, If you have to put women in there with us, even though we're supposed, you're supposed to be talking to black men, bringing them back to the table, you know, you can say black people. Just say it. I was like, hey, okay, before we get started, can we say it? No, nope, nobody has any balls anymore. None of you young guys, you Generation Zs and shit, that's, I guess, they have a zipped up. None of you have no balls. I'm not kissing no ass around here. You know, when are you going to have somebody, a man of distinction? You know, just somebody unto themselves, a true Sigma that will tell her, hey, before I even talk to you, I want to hear you say the word black people. I want you to hear you say that. Say black people. Say black people and shit, okay? As a matter of fact, say that in front of a camera. Say I'm here to I'm here to talk to black men, and, and in, in, in part and in, in whole, I want to talk to black people. We need you to vote for us so we can keep standing office and running this bitch into the ground and shit. And you know, before you get started, I ain't no fucking conservative and shit. They ain't gonna do no better. 
It's going to be the same old shit. And that's why black dudes checked out. That's why he checked out, man. I don't want to, I have nothing to vote for. What do I have to vote for? Shit, we, we're fighting for our independence in our own ethnic community. You know, you guys, the no doubt, you know, the minority majority, they don't got to do shit down here. It's a turnkey business. White supremacy is a turnkey business right now. And you got like this lieutenant black women down here trying to keep us locked in this bitch and keep us from getting climbing over walls up out of here to find our destiny. They want to stay in this pee hole, you know, this toilet bowl and shit, the porter potty, like I've said a million times, and, and keep going around the circle, keep walking around the circle, nodding your head and shit, and voting for the Democratic Party. Or vote for any fucking party. I say don't vote for anybody that can't even say our fucking name. And I ain't talking about no people of color. People of color is not us. Okay? Black women ain't us. It's black people. Do you got that shit? Black people. Okay? You tell her that. Teach her that. Say, okay, look. Listen to me, Kamala. Look, look. Just say it like I said. Black, black people. Black people. Black people. Sorry, I didn't mean to be annoying and shit or facetious. But every time I see her, I I, I get like a, a fucking migraine and shit. You know, it's like when I hear a certain content creator and that, that nasty ass laugh. That nasty ass laugh and shit. You know, she a covert misandrist and shit. You know, I ain't talk, you know, I try and go there. Sorry, I'm about to go off on the tangent. Yeah, yeah, come on here. She ought to be ashamed of yourself for speaking at this young man's funeral. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And as far as you know, getting a black male vote and shit. I don't know. You, goddamn, you, you gotta have some the, the best knee pads I ever seen in my life. You know, most space age technology knee pads to get any segment of the black community that's not simp's and, and female tampons to vote for this bullshit. Okay, you just take a. I don't know what you're gonna do. You know, whatever you do, please don't bring Stacey Abrams out into the the open air, you know, please stop bringing that one around. Now you can start to, you know, put her in the closet somewhere. You get Jimmy Hoffa the shit out of her. We are tired of seeing her ass, okay? Please don't bring Stacey Abrams out, and then you can get rid of that press secretary too. Fire that bitch, okay? Fire her. We're tired of seeing her, but especially, you know, because she following your bootstraps. She pulled herself up by her, her zipper uh, ankle boots, you know, tethered as she is. She pulled herself up, and when they asked her a question about black people specifically reparations, she made this weird eye thing. She did this weird fucked up eye thing like she was a malfunctioning robot. I don't know, maybe she is. Miss Harris, I ain't voting for you or, or, or Joe. You can suck my dick. Okay? Am I mean, being quite clear about that? And when I think about the courage and the strength of this family, I think it demands that we speak truth. And with this, I will say, this violent act was not in pursuit of public safety. It was not in the interest of keeping the public safe because one must ask, was not it in the interest of keeping the public safe that Tyree Nichols would be with us here today? Was he not also entitled to the right to be safe? So when we talk about public safety, let us understand what it means in its truest form. Tyree Nichols should have been safe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'll just close by saying this. I was, as a senator, as a United States senator, a co-author of the original George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And as Vice President of the United States, we demand that Congress pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Joe Biden will sign it. And we should not delay, and we will not be denied. It is non-negotiable.
And with that, I'll just, Pastor, if you don't mind, I, it, one of my favorite verses in Scripture is Luke chapter 1, verse 79, which tells us God will help us to shine a light upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. Let our memory of Tyree shine a light on the path toward peace and justice. Thank you. For African Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners. Because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country, right?